Chilomon Guadadio. This is what Everyone, praise the Lord. Today, Aujourd'hui, it's a special day in your life. No matter where you are, it's time to go up higher. You are the lowest point, or you are the middle point. Anywhere you are, it's my privilege, it's my calling, it's my joy. To take you from where you are and to tell you, come up. Come up. Come up higher. The Lord today will be taking hold of your life. You as an individual. And he'll show you the way up. And you will look up. And you will pray, and the power from heaven will come upon your life. Everything that held you down, everything that pushed you down, everything that locked you up, today is the day to go up higher. And pay attention. Just a short moment together, and your life will go up. Let's pray together. Father, we well, thank you. A glorious day, a gracious day, a marvelous day that you call everyone here, and you are telling us, Come up higher. Lord, I pray there'll be no exception. Every boy, every girl, every young man, every young woman, everyone present here, we will go up higher. No useless life here, and no downtrodden life here. No life that will be locked up permanently here. And online everywhere. Everywhere in every country. As we listen today. You break every chain. You destroy every yoke. And you lift everyone higher. Confirm each in every life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. In the few minutes we have together, I want you to pay, pay close attention. My topic to you is walking on the king's highway constantly going higher walking on the king's highway there are many ways in life there are many paths in life and many of those paths they lead to despair to the dungeon There is one highway. It's the highway of the king. Everyone that steps into that king's highway must go up. All you need to do today, I'll show you, discover that highway. Decide to walk in that highway. 
determined to remain in that highway. And then a little step. We call it baby step. One leg after the other. And you focus on the destination you want to get to. After some months, after some years, you will be high up by the grace of God. I'm reading Isaiah chapter 35, verse 8. It says, An highway shall be there, unmistakable. And highway shall be there, made by the God of heaven. And highway shall be there. And it is made for everyone that wants to go up. And a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. And unclean, the unclean shall not pass over it. But it shall be for those the way fearing men. Though fools shall not err therein. It says, even though we're foolish, even though we're ignorant, even though we're unwise, we step on God's highway. And it says, the foolish, the ignorant, the baby, the one who doesn't know anything. Once it steps on that way, it'll keep on walking and making progress. Why does he say they shall not even err therein? Because there is no bypass. There is no other way that we can mistakenly get into the highway of the Lord. It's an expressway and it is straightforward and everyone that steps therein, he will go higher. Walking on the king's highway. That means it's a continual thing. It's not that I walk forward a little, I walk backwards a little. That the reason many people don't go up higher. They take three steps forward. The following day, they take four steps backward. When you take three steps forward and four uh, steps backward, you actually go back one step. But, but if, you, if you are consistent, if it's constant, and you take one step forward today, one step forward tomorrow, one step forward, forward, forward every time, and you are walking consistently. And you are walking courageously. And you are walking purposefully. And you always take one step forward, one step forward, one step forward. You will get there. And so it takes a decision. It takes a determination. It takes a dedication that you say, I take the steps forward every time. If we're going to go up higher, that word come up higher, the word come is a verb, a word of action. When it says stand, if you keep on sitting down, you don't understand the word stand as a verb, a word of action. 
when it says come if you remain where you are and you don't have a desire a decision a response you don't understand the word come as a verb a word of action if you remain where you had been you do not understand come up and you know no matter how a room may be high up you are there at the ground floor and you look up that room that place is high and you say how do i come there he didn't say jump up higher i cannot i cannot jump and get to the top of that building but the architect who constructed the building and who knows that people will go from the ground floor and go to the last floor up he knows we cannot jump up higher and so they build the staircase and step after step one step after the other we're making the movement and we're coming up coming up coming up higher the great architect of earth and heaven the creator builder of earth and heaven the provider of all things on earth and heaven he knows he's going to call us to come up higher and because of that he builds the staircase one step after the other and if you take those steps eventually you'll get there higher i will get there higher say that for yourself i will get there that higher place i will get there you don't jump up to get there you go up step after step to get there everybody starts at the baby level nobody is born a doctor nobody is born an engineer nobody is born an achiever nobody is born a conqueror nobody is born a militant courageous soldier we all start at the ground level and god has built all the steps that you don't remain at the ground level all your life there's a level called despair we don't stay there all our lives there's a level called discouragement we don't stay there all our lives there is a level called average we don't stay there all our lives there's a level called slavery of slavery for despondency we don't stay there all our lives i look up i say that is where i am destined for and then i have a desire I say I'm not going to remain at that level of despair and discouragement all my life I have a desire I want to move on my desire must be followed up with 
decision. And I decide that my life will not remain at the ground level. A desire, a decision, and then I have determination. Many things will come in life that will try to send me back where it was coming from. The place of despair. The place of discouragement. The winds will blow at me. But I have decided. On the basis of desire that will never be tampered with by any creature on earth. And after that decision I have determination. That that height I have seen. That higher ground I have envisaged. That great vision of that higher place, I have the determination I'm getting there. And then I have diligence when determination has been set. I am diligent in everything I do. That every day will add to my progress of going higher that every act will add to my decision of a destiny that is higher and then i have the devotion that i am devoted to this this one thing i do so that I get to that higher ground. And then I link up with God. I make a demand. I make a petition. I make prayers to God. And the help of God. And the assistance of God. And the goodness of God. And the promise of God that can never fail that assists me and he gives a, a decree to confirm my demand going up higher is a journey and i never forget where i'm going i never forget the determination and the destination higher 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 somebody shout higher you reach there in jesus name walking on the king's highway constantly going higher when you can at three things here Number one, we're looking at dissatisfaction with the hedged way of limitation. There are lives that are hedged around. And because of the hedging around of their lives, they're limited. It's like when you tie a goat to a pole. The, the rope is on the neck of that goat. The other side, the other a part of the rope is at the pole. The goat can move here and there. But he will never go beyond the length of that rope. You draw a circle. You put a pole at the center. 
you you put a rope at the you put the pole and then you tie the rope at that center and then you tie the other end of the rope on the neck of the goat and the goat can only go through the circumference and the radius is determined already it will not go beyond that circumference and a time comes in your life when you are dissatisfied with merry-go-round you are dissatisfied with the edge path that you have you want to break that and go beyond that's coming up going up rising up higher number two is dedication on the highway of life's liberation when the lord when the lord comes to liberate you and set you free and all the limitations of your life all the things that hedge you down all the things that pin you down you're liberated you're free you are ready to go you are ready to run you are ready to come up higher dedication on that highway of life's liberation and now number three is the diligence in the heavenly way for the lord diligence in the heavenly way for the lord and to the lord and as we take the step one two three we get to the higher ground higher possession higher place higher achievement the lord has called us to we're looking at number one here number one is dissatisfaction with the hedge way of limitation i have some references here and there i would say in a bracket i open the bracket with deuteronomy chapter one i close the bracket or Deuteronomy chapter 2 think about that in many lives when their bracket opens there is a hedge there is a limitation there is a merry-go-round as they were last year they are this year as they are this year they might be next year they do the same thing think the same way plan the same way work the same way all years of their lives their lives open with this reference and their lives close with this reference all you have in between is limitation 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 but you become dissatisfied with that this cannot go on forever like this look at Deuteronomy chapter one i'm reading from verse six the lord our god speak unto us in hurry saying ye have dwelt long enough in this mount you have remained in this class for so long you have remained at this same level long time 
you have been hovering around this place for a long time you have been limited to this for a long time think about your life what have you been doing there long long time that you remain in the same position you remain at the same level you remain in the same situation you remain in the same problem you remain in the same failure you remain in the same disappointment you remain in the same place a long time the lord said unto them and the lord is saying unto you think 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 about your life ye have dwelt long enough in this mount look at the first part of verse 7 there in the first part of verse 7 it says it says now turn you and take your journey and go to up to the mount the failure of the past in all the disappointments of the past in all the merry-go-round of the past in all movement without progress in all work without achievement in all here and there without any place of purpose in all have you thought about your life your character your behavior your habit your spirituality your achievement anything any, anything you have been doing are you not doing the same thing no progress are you not praying the same prayer no progress are you not trying to act action 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 no progress the lord wants us to think through in our lives that we are not just living there at the same level doing the same thing merry going round and yet no progress it's like when the way is hedged and what you did 10 years ago is what you're still doing now where you were 40 years ago is where you are now a terrible sorrowful limitation because of the way that is hurt by difficulties and challenges and we're, and we're not removing the hedges and we're just there limited let me close the bracket now with Deuteronomy chapter 2 and I'm looking at verse 3 it says in verse 3 it says ye have compassed this mountain long enough turn ye upward not word why the children of israel why were they always moving and not getting up why the children of israel were still doing all their merry go around 40 years and they didn't reach the land of promise walking expending energy eating walking rising exercising and yet there's no proof that any better thing coming in their lives let me tell you about something about them that you may learn something about yourself number one they had deliverance without devotion 
the Lord delivered them out of the land of Egypt but there was no devotion to the Lord that gave them deliverance in our lives we go for prayer we have deliverance but there is no goal to which we are dedicated in our lives we're healed when people pray for us and yet there is no goal there is no purpose there is no plan there is no destination that we are dedicated to that's why people do merry go around they get healing they get deliverance because there's no devotion there's no progress in their lives Do you remember the story of the children of Israel? They got manna from heaven. And they ate manna every day. They ate the manna they put in their mouth. They didn't have manners, character, behavior in the sight of the Lord. Manna to eat, no manna in their character. That's why they were doing the merry-go-round and they were not making progress. Manna is provision from heaven, is given by God, and we eat that, and yet no manners, no changed life, no changed behavior. The grace of God was not poured into their lives to have the manners the Christian character, the behavior, and because there is no manner, the manner, the edge, did not move them forward to go up higher. If you look at the children of Israel, hundreds of thousands of them that didn't get higher to the promised land they had triumph but they didn't have tamed tongues they triumphed over the enemies in the wilderness they triumphed over pharaoh and his chariots in the red sea you see when people have triumph over the local challenge there over the local problem there but they do not have tamed tongues their tongues will be bringing them down every time the children of Israel had healing but he didn't have holiness. He brought them out. And there was no feeble person among them. And he made the healing covenant with them. He said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. But you know, they didn't have holiness joined with that healing. That's why all those people that had healing in the wilderness, healing in the, as they were coming out of Egypt, many of them did not get to higher ground, to the land of Canaan, to the land of promise, because they didn't have anything more than that healing. We must add holiness to healing. Those children of Israel were excited people, joyful people, happy people. Happiness alone does not get us to higher ground. They had the song of praise, they didn't have the stage of purity. And 
that's why many people today they have a, a they come a happy life an excited life that for this meeting and that meeting then this crusade in that crusade happy excited joyful but we must add the stage of purity the children of israel do you remember their story they were thirsty and there was no water to drink and there the man of god was there he struck the rock and water came out for them but you know they had water from the rock they didn't have the willingness for righteousness and the miracle water that they drank was not enough to take them up higher there was still merry going round in our lives we should look at the water of life that he gives and look at the willingness for righteousness that he wants us to also have uh, those people had demand for milk and honey they said where is the milk and honey well the milk and honey is available but they did without the desire for movement towards heaven what success do i have on earth what privilege do we have on earth if we have all the earthly supply and we do not have the willingness and the worthiness to get to heaven and so that's what god wants to do in our lives so that the edges around our lives that has been there all the time that we say lord now i have a desire i have a decision i have a determination that that higher ground i will get to the higher ground not only in academics not only in profession in the spiritual life that will make sure we are saved we are born again the new life in Christ has come to us and we have received we have embraced and the spirit of God in our heart bearing witness we are children of God that's the beginning of making that desire that decision realizable in our lives so that with all that we have got the decision to follow christ that's devotion to the way of the lord and then there are the deeds the, the manners the character the behavior of a true believer that follows after that and the grace of god also transforms our tongues Then many people talk when you should be quiet many people talk 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 and talk and they do not look at the weight or the value of the things they talk and when the grace of god comes in our lives and our tongues are transformed and our lives are transformed and then we pray with that cleansed and tame tongues and the lord puts righteousness and holiness in our lives he gives us blessing for our body he gives us blessing for our brain and he gives us blessing for our heart for our life and we we'll live a life of righteousness and holiness 
by his grace then are we truly going up higher and he puts the willingness to live a righteous life at school in college at the university in the world at the profession anyway we are we know i am here to demonstrate i am here to show i am here to get people to see a life of righteousness and holiness that's the way in the hand of the lord by the power of the lord that will come up higher In Proverbs chapter 15, reading from verse 19, Proverbs chapter 15, we're reading there from verse 19, it says the way of the slothful is an edge of thorns. This was slothful. Those who are idle and those who do not have any plan any purpose and any perseverance of moving up higher those people they they are edged around and it's like thorns the wall of thorns they cannot rise up higher they cannot move up higher but when you tell the lord that you want a higher ground that you want what god has ordained for you you see the screen that you want the purpose of god and the plan of god in your life you will get higher i said you will get higher i said you will get higher that is the way of the lord that is what the lord has ordained a decision for the lord that to say i have decided to follow christ no turning back no turning back i have decided to go up higher no turning back no turning back i have decided that with all diligence and devotion i will follow the lord no turning back no turning back that's when that's when the possibility of going up higher will happen in your life number one is dissatisfaction with the hedged way of limitation number two is the dedication on the highway of life's liberation 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 that the lord takes you out of that disappointing life out of that dissatisfied life out of the life of despondency that the lord takes you out sets you free with salvation sets you free with a new life in christ that is when the upward journey onto that higher place that is when it begins and the lord has given us a promise he wants to take us higher come unto me he said come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden you have been laboring we doing that merry-go-round and you have not achieved anything you're laboring and you're sweating 
and you have not achieved the upward journey now you decide for the lord he says come i'm the only one that can take you higher he says come i'm the only one that can liberate you come i am the only one that can set you free and then you make up your mind you decide you get up and you go in one direction the direction of the lord your liberator and say lord here i come he says what do you want every time anyone comes to the lord the lord will ask them the lord will ask him or her what do you want that i do for you and then you say i want liberation i want to walk on the highway that leads to life's liberation and he has the power he does that for you and today and today as you come you are not you are not trying to go up without his help without his grace without his enablement how can you liberate yourself from all the things that tie you down as you come you trust him that he is the one that can give you that liberation that he is the one that can set you free from all the things that limit your life from all the things that pin you down from all the things that will not allow you to have progress he lies breaks come unto him unto christ the one that grants you liberation he is the one that can take you from the poor situation where you are and can bring you to the throne of the kings to reign with the lord because you see all the things we can do for ourselves all the things we can achieve for ourselves cannot get us to that higher ground where joy and love and faith abound he promises us that all those who realize that they are in the dungeon of limitation and they will make up their mind and decide and they will come to him he says whosoever cometh to me i will in no wise cast off you come and as you come you depend on him you trust him and he will lift you higher today i said today it will lift you higher in jesus name because he is the only liberator what steps do i take because i told you that if we're going to go from the ground level and go to the high level we go step by step step by step and is the is the addition is the accumulation of all those all those steps will take that gets us to that higher ground you're responding to the invitation of christ come unto me come unto me all ye that labor and your heavy lady to respond to that call you leave all your sins and self-centeredness behind you leave all your sins and self-centeredness behind when we talk of sin 
some people who read only one portion of the Bible. You say, I've left all my sins. And I'm asking them, how about idleness? He that knows to do good and does not do it to him, it's a sin. How about bringing all your gifts and using it profitably for the calling of God in your life? He that knows to do good, you know how to read, you are not reading. And you know how to study, you are not studying. You have the textbooks, you are not using them. And you know how to prepare for the exam, you are not preparing. You know? That's part of the sin we need to repent of. That we turn around and all the edges around us and all the things that slow us down, we get rid of them, march forward with determination and with devotion. You'll get up in Jesus. And of course, all the other sins in your life, all the other misbehavior in your life, if you are going to get up and you are going to lead, the people who are lawless do not come to leadership. You need to have all that Christ has provided in our liberation. And then you lean on the Savior of sinners. You can lean on Him. You can lean on Him. You can depend on Him. You can trust Him. You can have confidence on Him. And you can have your petition, your prayer centered on him. And whatsoever you ask in the name of Jesus, he will grant it unto you. And you learn from the scripture for success. When you learn from the scriptures, he'll tell, the scriptures will tell you. The path to success is not through the act of stealing, of spying, or cheating, of looking at the works of other people and taking their work to be your work. I'm going up. I'm climbing up. I'm soaring up. Then cheating will get out of your life. Stealing will get out of your life. You will not steal the research work of other people and then put some little, little alterations and make it your own. That's not how to succeed if God is helping you to climb up. And then you live loyally in the same steps of Christ. Who is the model of success? Who is the pathway to success? Who is the perfect example for success? Christ the Lord. Christ our Savior. Christ the pacemaker. And Christ the one that goes beyond and will follow. And so you look at the steps of Christ. What will Christ do? And he says, Follow me. As you follow his example, as you follow his pattern, as you follow his way of life, that, that's how to succeed in the realm of the kingdom. If you follow the ways of the world, the way they think they'll have success in the world. If you follow them, you'll not get to the final destination of heaven. You might have earthly things, but you'll not have uh, heavenly riches and heavenly value. 
and you love lawfully in the sunshine of his sermon. He's giving us a sermon on the mount. He's giving us the way up. It's giving us the way to discover this is what we have if we follow the Lord. And it is when we follow that. When we give our hearts, our lives to Him, step by step, day by day, by the grace He offers, by the goodness of His life penetrating our lives inspiring our lives and we're living according to the word he has revealed this way he leads us to that higher ground and then you lose yourself from the shackles of satan If some gang or some society has, you know, brought you in and they say, this is the in thing. This is what the people who are high over there and the people who are sparring to get there. This is the gang they join. You say no. No gang. No secret society. But I'm going to walk in the steps of the Savior. And I lose myself from the shackles of Satan. That is when his uplifting hand will take hold of you. He will lift you up. Higher. Higher. Let's go to Ayla. I said, I am. It is when God takes us up. He life breaks us. He lifts us up. And we move on. That is how his life breaking power will so work in our lives. And we're going to go higher. And we labor in the strength of the Lord. We labor in the strength of the Lord. That is what takes us from where we are to where He has planned where we'll be. Number one, we're dissatisfied with where we've been just merry going round and then number two we have the decision and the dedication that we're going to follow is highway to life's liberation number three now we have the diligence and the heavenly way for the Lord the diligence the commitment the consecration the one mind one heart we devote to following the Lord the diligence in many parts of the Bible we're told to give diligence to what we're pursuing that means your mind will not turn here, will not turn there. A man of one goal, a man of one purpose, a man of one desire, a man of one dedication, a man of one path that you are on and on and on and you are going there. The Lord will help you. I said, the Lord will help you. Actually, Solomon is asking a question. Solomon was that diligent man. From his youth. 
and he had the diligence to follow through in what the Lord had called him to and he said he was not the only one that was diligent he was not the only one that pursued and pursued and pursued until he got what he wanted he said seest thou a man diligent in all his ways he shall stand before the kings he shall not stand before mean men Have you seen a student diligent in his way? Have you seen a boy, a girl diligent in her way? Have you seen a researcher diligent in his way? Have you seen somebody with consecration and with concentration? And his mind will not be diverted here and there. Seest thou a man diligent in his ways? He will not stand before mean men. He will not stay before mean men. He will not join himself with the never do well people. He will stand before kings in the language of today it will stand it will work in the office of the president you didn't say amen to that one it's when we have that diligence and we show the same diligence unto the end. It's the, that purpose of mind. It is that goal we have. And we're diligent in everything we do. Somebody said, the way you do one thing in your life is the way you will do all the rest of the things you do in life. You learn to be diligent in one thing, in one area of your life. You are going to be diligent in other areas of your life too. Diligent in prayers and supplication. Diligent in your study and in your profession. You are diligent in every area of your lifestyle. That's when you have the place on high that you ought to have. What way do you follow diligently? What way do you follow with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind? The way of the Lord. Here is the way of God, the way of the Lord. He has shown everything in the world. And now we follow with decision. We follow with dedication. We follow with diligence. The way of the Lord. If there is any way, any path that is shown to you. And somebody says, follow this way. You don't just jump up and follow any way. You will check up. Is this the way of God? If there is, if there is evil there, that's not the way of God. If there is sin there, that's not the way of God. If that's the way the drunkards take and the evil people take, that's not the way of the Lord. To get up, to rise up, to go up, to mount up. One, we must follow the way of God. We must follow the way of salvation. If I follow this way, I may get money. 
Will I have salvation? If I follow this way, I may have recognition by people. Is that the way of salvation? If I follow this way, I may have pleasure for one night or even for the rest of life. Is that the way of salvation? The way we follow, so we come up higher. The way we follow, so we get to the mountain top. It's the way of God. It's the way of salvation. It's the way of peace. It says the way of peace they do not know. The people who are fighting and striving for something higher in this world, the way of peace they do not know. And so you must ask yourself, this way I want to follow. Is, that way, is it the way of God? Is it the way of salvation? Is it the way of peace? Is it the way of righteousness? What I do, how I act, the path I follow, the way I follow, is that the way of righteousness? I must ask myself, you must ask yourself, is that the way of truth and truthfulness? You may lie your way to get more things in this world. You may deceive most of the people all the time. And have this and have that dust and sand in the world. But you cannot deceive God. You cannot deceive the Almighty, the all seeing eye. If you are going to get up, if you are going to go up, if you are going to reach the land of promise, you must follow consistently every step of your life, every act of your life. You must follow the way of truth and truthfulness. And then you must follow the way of his steps. Christ has left us an example. And he suffered for us. That we should follow his steps. If Christ won your situation today. What way will he follow? What steps will he show? What example will he leave us? And what action will he have? In every area, every situation of your life, you must be asking yourself, what will Christ do? Will Christ get angry? Fight? Push the other person out of that place. I said, that's my place. That's my place. Ah, uh -uh, Christ will not do that. And because Christ will not do that, what will Christ do? What will Christ say? How will Christ act? If you're going to get all your way to the top, you follow the way of his steps and of course i'm sure you know that the way that leads to heaven the highest thing you can ever desire it is the way of holiness and he is the one that has the power to save us to grant us righteousness to grant us holiness and you say follow peace with all men 
good men and bad men with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord number one you have a desire in every area of my life you're not to be a cake that is burnt on one side and is still raw on the other side every part of your life every part of your life the spiritual and the secular every part of your life the professional and the purified life every area of your life personal in the family in the congregation at the university at the college every area of your life you want to have a desire for that high level of living and then in the area of your private spiritual endeavor you want to have that decision to start with and the desire you will live as you ought to live every area of your life if you are married in the family every area of your life if you are in the profession at the place of work every area of your life the way you live the way you stand the things you do the things you say you want to make sure that every step every act every deed is by the grace of God and that grace makes you to live to please the Lord all the time and the Lord is able I said the Lord is able desire decision determination dedication diligence and God will take you to where he has ordained for your life in Jesus name and everybody said amen let's rise up now and tell the Lord it's not the usual normal cold prayer it's a prayer that shows a fiery desire that shows a firm decision Lord I want to be there higher ground higher ground higher ground higher ground come come that's a verb a word of action from your heart from your mind your more inner personality from everything you have on the inside of you a desire for that higher ground why don't you pray why don't you tell the lord open your mouth and pray let him hear you pray that you have the desire you have the decision and anything that will take you down rather than up you reject that thing you say no to that thing you say lord higher ground is only my pursuit show your desire your decision to the lord your desire 
your destination and your decision unto the Lord. Tell him. Show your desire to the Lord. Express your decision to the Lord. Lord, higher ground. Time of laziness over. Time of idleness over. Time of merry going round over. Wasting of time over. Wasting of your life over. Wasting of your destiny over. Splashing all your life, all your skill, all your energy here and there. Mary going around and going nowhere. All that over. Time of having friends and just wasting your life with them. Time of throwing precious hours away. All that over. Tell the Lord. He lift you up. When you raise your hands by faith unto him. He lift you up ground. Off ground. He lift you up all that disappointing situation. He lift you up from that despair in life. Is the one that brings hope. Is the one that brings life. Is the one that brings excitement to life. And brings success and joy to life. Talk to the Lord. He's right there to help you. And if you say, Lord, here I am. With a great, passionate, fiery desire. With a firm decision. And with a fortified dedication. But to say, Lord, here I am. If nobody ever goes up with me, I am going up. He'll do it. He can do it. When you surrender your heart and your life unto him. When you give him everything without reservation. And you say, Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. Lift me up. Take me up. Grant me heavenly diligence. That I'll not be up and down, up and down. But all my life, all my soul, everything within me. With focus and with dedication. Looking up at the place I need to get to. Help me, Lord. It will help you. Talk to the Lord. Tell him your desire. Tell him your pursuit. Tell him what you want. You will do it. Believe him. Trust him. Have confidence in him. That what you have asked for, according to his will, he grants you. He cannot fail. He has not lied unto you. What he said he will do, he meant to do that. Salvation, the first thing you ought to aim at, get at that one. 
salvation. Salvation. The first thing he wants you to have. If you have that, all the others will follow. Salvation. Tell the Lord, you have to forsake your sin. Forsake all that self-centeredness. And forsake all that evil of humanity. And call upon the name of the Lord. And say, Lord, I know that Jesus died for me to give me salvation. He will do it. He will do it. He saves every sinner who repents. And it brings a new life to them. That new life is right there. Tell him and he will save you. And whatever the challenge you have. He has solution for every problem, every challenge. If you tell him, he will grant you that solution. In Jesus' name we pray. Raise up your hand. You want salvation? You want solution? You want help? Age from heaven? You want the lifting hand to lift you up? out of that dungeon of despondency and discouragement you desire going up you desire the lifting up the vibration what are you let the lord know you desire something good there it doesn't matter what they desire what they don't desire you as a person As we pray now, God will answer our prayer. <laughs> We're ready now to pray. If you're sick, you lay your hand where you're sick. If there's no vision, no sight, you lay your hand on your face. If there's no strength, to rise up and forge ahead. You don't have any backbone to stand courageously. Lay your hand on that backbone and then the Lord strengthen you from the physical to the spiritual. The time of solution has now come. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you are a good God. The lifter up of our head, the lifter up of our lives, the lifter up of our soul, spirit, and our heart, the healer of our body, the one that gives solution to every problem. We come now as we invited us to come. We want the time of disappointment to be all over. The time of despair to be all over. The time of being in the dungeon to be all over. 
Lord, in your power. Lord, in your wonders. Lord, in your divine ability. Bring an end to the uselessness of life in Jesus' name. Those who are struggling or sin, living in sin, dying in sin, Lord, turn them around and let the power and the salvation come to everyone in Jesus' name. New life, righteous life. A holy life, a straightforward life, a good behavior, the righteousness that follows salvation. Give unto everyone now in Jesus' name. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. If any woman be in Christ, she's a new creature. That newness of life grant unto everyone that wants that has decided for Christ now in Jesus name yeah. we're asking oh Lord that the confirmation of that salvation the evidence of that salvation will be seen in every life that has believed in Jesus' name. Yeah. We're asking, Lord, for anyone that has any form of sickness in their body, touch them, transform their lives, remove all that sickness, right now in the matchless name of Jesus. Any life that is pinned down with failure. Lord, I pray that your mighty power from heaven will take that failure away in Jesus' name. Now, lifting power for everyone. At what level, at whatever level they may be. I pray your life bridge and lift up everyone in Jesus' name. Yeah. With the power of the Lord, with the lifting of the Lord, and with the help and age of the Lord. I pray for everyone that has had your word this morning. They will go up higher. They will come up higher. They will walk forward higher. In their brain, in their mind, they will think of higher things. In the skill of their hand. They will do greater things as they walk through life. You protect everyone. You preserve everyone. You energize everyone. That will keep on walking without getting tired until we reach that higher ground. Don't leave anyone here alone in Jesus' name. When we get to that higher ground, we'll be stable and solid and steadfast on higher ground. And that will be a new platform. For higher, higher, higher grounds. And when we reach there, you help us to look at the stars. 
and we'll see greater things than we have achieved in Jesus' name. Do it for everyone. The youngest amidst us, the oldest among us, higher ground for everyone. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said a dynamic amen. Turn to the one, turn to the one by your side there. Tell him I'm going uh, to higher ground. Let heaven hear your voice. Amen for you in Jesus' name.